two, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ian Graven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. For the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron? You can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids, and if not, you ain't got to go there. That's fine, too. Uh, team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. <laughs> We got some good questions, some really good questions like we always do. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. First question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? To say the Ravens' offensive struggles are alarming would be an understatement. The last month and a half, the offense has been terrible, and I agree with the points you're making about it being a combination of issues. The offensive line is terrible. The play calling is suspect. The overall system as a whole is suspect to me. Lamar Jackson is playing hero ball too much, looking for the big play. And it's killing us with the turnovers and constant sacks he's taking. The Ravens need to fix these issues in a hurry because I'm starting to notice a lot of frustration on the sidelines. It can become a divided locker room quick or a division between players and coaches. As a true Ravens fan, I don't want that to happen, but I have to call it how I see it. Just curious to know your thoughts on my assessments. Ooh, that would be some scary stuff right there. And that's you don't you don't want those problems at all. A divided locker room, a divide between coaches and players. Ooh, that's never good because when that happens, ooh, that's when egos really take over. Next question came from my guy, Yosef. He said, Hey, Graven, before I start, just wanted to say thank you for everything you do and all the content you put out for Ravens Flock. I was listening to your live stream after the loss to Pittsburgh, and I think you're not giving a fair assessment to the choice to go for the two-point conversion. You seem to be saying that even if you don't go for the win, you still have a 50-50 shot of not having to put a defense on the field that doesn't have Marlo, Tavon, MP, Elliott, and Chris Westry. While that is true, I still think you're completely missing the point. The question Hobbs had to ask himself wasn't whether he should trust Lamar or a banged-up defense. The question he had to ask himself was, does Giro have a two-point conversion play that gives us a better, a better than 50-50 shot at winning this game? Well, with the uh, two-point conversion, it is a 50-50 shot. Because you either get it or you don't. That's it. Because two-point, ain't, ain't no first downs on no two-point conversion. Ain't no first down. That is, is all or nothing. And if you get all, okay, you got it. You got the right 50%. And if you don't get it, ooh. So anyway, he said also he felt there was less than a 50-50 shot if they would lose the coin toss. He felt that they did, and I believe he was vindicated by how the play played out. Regardless of who's more at fault, I think Lamar and Andrews would probably hit that play 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 times. I believe Hobbs believed that too, and he's probably seen that play run in practice a ton of times. So yes, you're correct that they could have gone for the point after touchdown and still not have put their defense on the field. But if you agree with me that Lamar and Andrews connect on that play 8 to 10 or 9 to 10 at times, uh, why would you rather a 50-50 chance over an 80-20 or 90-10 chance? It's still a 50-50 though. It's still a 50-50. Cause like I said, they either they could have they could have connected on the ball and Mark Andrews could have got tackled. <laughs> so if <laughs> if that it's 50-50 regardless, they got a shot to either convert or they don't. Ain't ain't no second chances. There are no second chances with that. So that's it. He said if you disagree and think that the chance of playing working out is less than or equal to 50%, there's nothing I can do to convince you. And by the way, if you're going to say that any play has a 50-50 chance of working out, I will also completely disagree with you. The end result could be 50-50. You either get the conversion or you don't, but there are endless possibilities of what would happen to lead you to that point. Again, thanks for everything, Go oh, Ravens. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Next question came from my guy, Bakari. He said, hey, Graven. Hope all is well with you and your fam. I was watching that stinker of a game against Pittsburgh and was sitting there after the game ended, ticked off at how it ended. Sitting there just upset and thinking about Roman's play calling. Why does it always seem like he can call the correct plays only when it comes down to our last drive and we are down and need to go down and score? He seems to never be able to get the right play call throughout the rest of the game consistently. I hope you can enlighten me and anyone else who has the same problem with Roman's play calling. I, I don't know what it is. It's, 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 it's weird. And we know what the situation is with all the injuries and stuff. But still, I with the injuries, I, I can't like completely put it on injuries because this offensive line been injured for a long time. And like the injuries are new. So they got to do a better job of adjusting to what the situation is. This is something that we had just got on uh wink about because he was not doing it he he was playing with backup guys like they were starters and, and they're not they're not he wasn't adjusting to the situation but then over the past couple of weeks he has been Giro got to get on that too 
Next question came from TA804. He said, Angry Raven, hope you and the fam and the rest of the team keep it clean have been well. As I'm watching your video about Bateman and getting a new agent and thinking about Humphrey being potentially lost for the season, something came across my mind. Do you think that Harbaugh and Roman will have to open up the playbook in order to make up for the injuries on the back end of our defense? I think we can, uh, we can do that if they spread them out more. They don't have a choice. They have to open up that offense. They have no choice. Because th this season is riding on the offense, so Harbaugh and Roman, they, they got to get on it. Well, Roman. Super Bowl or bust? Next question came from my guy, DJ Bill. He said, uh, Super Bowl or bust and offensive issues? I don't think I've ever seen a team be referred to as a Super Bowl or bust team with so many injuries on the roster, but here we are. The 2021 Baltimore Ravens. The reason I say that is because all of the other teams with this many injuries didn't even make the playoffs, much less have pressure on them to win a championship. 2021 Giants, Broncos, and Titans, 2020 49ers, Eagles, Jags, Patriots, and then 2019 Jets, Dolphins, Jags, and Lions, to name a few. Why are the Ravens under so much pressure in a season where any other team will probably get a pass? And is it because Lamar is simply on a different level in terms of expectations? Boom. You already answered your own question. That's it. You already answered your own question. And then... It's also because of the Ravens, too. Because they are in this situation right now, they're 8-4. and four. Had they been 4-8, and eight, then there would not be any pressure on them at all. It wouldn't be. Had their season been uh, over already, then the pressure wouldn't be there because the season would have been over. So it's like, all right, well, Ravens ain't making the playoffs. Okay, whatever. But since they're in this situation, and, of course, they have Lamar Jackson. You know how media feels about Lamar Jackson. Then that's why there's so much pressure on them. Uh, he said, with the offense, of course, Lamar is the blame for turnovers and pressing too much, but what do we expect him to do? No one ever mentions the fact that from week two to week 14, Devontae Freeman has 376 yards on the ground, while Latavius Murray has only 78 more yards than Tyson Williams. So when the statement is made, we should go back to the running game. What running game are we referring to? But my real question is, what is the fix for this offense, given what we know now? Uh, Greg Roman is not going anywhere, at least for the year. And should we really trust Roman to, you know, forge a new identity, or open up the vault, or have anything up his sleeve? <laughs> he said, my quick thought, use every weapon you have. Teams aren't scared of the running game because, well, why should they be besides Lamar? Those yards after uh, catch plays, screens, the checkdowns, the play where Hollywood runs backwards, decoy plays are what we need. But as we said, can we really trust Roman to take that next step? Um... I don't think we can. We just got to hope that he does. Uh, I know a lot of people's expectations are pretty low when it comes to that. Um, but all, all they can really do, all we can really do as fans is just hope that they just, something just drastically changes. Maybe they do a 2012 Cam Cameron type of situation. Next question came from my guy D3. He said, Good morning, Graven and team. Keep it clean. Hope all is well with you and yours during this emotional roller coaster of a season. I got a few questions and thoughts I wanted to get your opinion on. First, while considered a passing league, the Patriots bludgeoned the Bills with 37 straight running plays in windy conditions that secured a road victory last night. My question to you is how likely is it that the Ravens can regain their old identity back of Smash Mouth football and run the ball like we did last year? Offensive line. That's that's it. Offensive line. That's the only way that they're going to even come close to running the ball how they did before. Offensive line. He said, we all complain about the balance in the passing and the run game, but us passing so much has exposed Lamar to a league lead, league, league amount, uh, amount of sex. Offensive line again. Um, at times, I wish we didn't trade the number one Russian offense moniker in the 32nd passing offense for the stats that we have now. Lamar is too valuable to sustain all the hits he's been getting this year, albeit some of it is because he's holding on to the ball too long. It's reminiscent of the second 2020 game against Pittsburgh. The second one? Ain't he? I thought he missed the second one. Because the, the first one was, uh, was the, uh, the game where he threw the pick six to Proche. Um, to, well, Highsmith ended up pick six in it. But um, no, Spillane, Spillane, Spillane. He ended up doing a pick six. And I thought the second game was the COVID game. Was it the other way around? Uh, anyway, it don't even matter. Um, it was reminiscent of the second 2020 game against Pittsburgh. Early in the season against him, uh, he held onto the ball too long with strip sack in the red zone. After sitting out of game due to COVID, he came back and was making his reads quicker and then taking off to gain yards. Yeah, once he came back healthy, he came, he came back. He was, a, he was killing it. Anyway. Uh, I just feel like our motto on offense should be move the chains at all costs instead of constantly looking for the big play. I agree. 
Uh, that way, all of our receivers can shine with the run setting of the pass in 10-yard increments. Let our linemen gain confidence in just going after defenders while getting the plays in faster so Lamar can read the defense before the snap. True. Uh, there wasn't a problem when Huntley started, so why can't we get the plays in faster for Lamar? Mm, so maybe it's Lamar that's not getting the plays in fast enough. I right, said, lastly, with an offense that is grinding it out with punishing runs, our defense can rest. Yes, and they need it. Uh, that is what got us over when Lamar got his first start in 2018 and so many other games in addition to that, too. Uh, we can't just abandon the run if it gets stopped a few times. Do you think EDC will do a surprise signing to add more depth to the DB room outside of the ones that he just signed to the practice squad? I, I, he can't really do any surprises because, I mean, <laughs> ain't no, like, oh, man, who's this hot free agent that's out there on the market right now? It's week 14. So anybody who you signed, I don't think we, any, any, of us, any of us will be surprised because uh, the Ravens, they need bodies. He said, thank you for your, your opinion on this. And as a fan, we all look forward to your takes on these glaring issues that we have. Stay blessed. And shout out to Pookie, Carter, and your wife, bro. Appreciate you, man. All right, next question came from my guy, Makai. And yes, different camera to backup camera because the other one was dying because we did so many questions from subscribers. Anyway, he said, hello, Engraven. Your defense gives up 17 points in the fourth quarter, and that's with Marlon Humphrey. You also have Lamar Jackson. I would 10 for 10 take Lamar converting two yards over your defense without Humphrey. That just gave up 17 points in one quarter. Keep up the great work. I appreciate it. I, I still didn't agree with the call, but that's cool. Media talking blames. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up? Shout out from Mexico. I know at this point, many of us Ravens fans are fed up with the media and truly so because they take out of context what is happening on the field and within the team. With all the injuries, we have no wonder why we are not this close to be a hospital on a regular schedule. LOL. But hear me out. What would the media say about us making the playoffs and winning our first game? The hospital with the hospital we are carrying right now. I know they will say it's all coaching, but I will credit Lamar more for being the one that helps us on the field. Well, it would all depend on how everything went down. Um, and hopefully we get to see what that scenario is like. Uh, my second question to you and Team Keep It Clean is what do we do for next year as a whole organization? Regarding coaching, players, and also how to address fans and their concerns with the team. It seems to me that the blame is is to share throughout the team, but how much blame does each part carry? That's to be determined. Stay safe and tell team keep it clean. The night is dark, it's just before the dawn, and we will come out of this with our head held high. Um it's 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 too early. You gotta see how the season plays out uh before you really address all that off season stuff. That's why it's off season stuff. Um but they certainly uh just need to No passes. I, I would say no passes, man. No passes. Um, yeah, there have been injuries. There, there sure have been. But they need to, for next season, um, and a, you still got to get through this season, but they need to hit the ground running, and they need to come out ready on fight. They just need to come out right. And the, the, the coaching needs to be right, the personnel, of course. And, again, with the injuries, it's, it's tough. But still. There's still, even with the, the injuries and stuff, there's still been this lack. There have been this lack. So they cannot afford to have this lack. And especially when the guys get healthy. Because you don't want it to be to where, since guys are just such great players that they cover up defic deficiencies with your scheme. You don't want that. You want the scheme to make these good players even better and put them in even better positions. So, but that's just me. Next question came from my guy Clarence. He said, Lamar's problem is the offensive line. Lamar doesn't know when it is good once the ball is snapped because the O-line is messed up. People are people and we can't change them to be successful if it ain't in them to be successful. I am very confused on that one. You got to elaborate. Next question came from my guy Naeem. He said, first off, wanted to start this off by saying how cool it has been to see how much you and this channel have evolved over the years. Oh, I ain't evolved at all. I'm... Same old annoying dude as always. But anyway, uh, he said, been watching since the car videos and most definitely been awesome to see this channel where it is now. Uh, now for the question, with the AFC conference being so wide open, it's definitely been tough for me and probably the rest of us to predict the future when it comes to the playoffs. As the season is nearing its end, we are beginning to see exactly which teams are for real and which aren't. I don't think we are. Not in the AFC. I, I don't think we are. It's, it's still looking wide open to me. I know Patriots, they've been on this hot streak. Chiefs, they've been coming back. Uh, but I, uh, no, it's, it's still wide open to me. Uh, anyway, he said, with that being said, what two to three teams would you not want to see in the postseason? Um, which two to three teams would I not want to see? Well, uh, these Ravens, they, um, 
I feel like they they can be their own biggest, their own worst enemy. Uh, so I would not want to see the bad version of the Ravens, the slow offensive start version of the Ravens, the defense falling apart version of the Ravens in the playoffs. I would want to see the fast offense getting off to a fast start, scoring touchdowns instead of field goals. Uh, defense hold. That's the team that I would want to see. But as far as other teams, um, really, I, whoever, man, I, like if a team is in the playoffs and they're a playoff team. So I, I don't feel like there's a team, oh, Ravens just, they can't play them. Oh, Ravens can't match up with them. Oh, Ravens just absolutely should not play them. I just feel like, okay, it's playoffs. So you're going to have to match up. Is this the best of the best? Even though they added another team to the playoff. But still, this is the best of the best. So it ain't no running from nobody. Next question came from my guy Alonzo. He said, hope all is well with you and the family. Quick question. Why isn't DuVernay used how Landry, uh, Woodhead, and others are being used? Woodhead? Danny Woodhead? Who, who that? Uh, yeah, I think he can be used more like that because he has hands and is a strong runner. I hope all is well uh, from my son and all. Have a good one. Hey, appreciate you, Alonzo. Now, as far as Jarvis Landry, Jarvis, they, they got Jarvis Landry throwing passes. I mean, if Duvernay got an arm, I mean, it wasn't mine or whatever, but um, he, we see him being incorporated more and more. Uh, so let's hope that continues And then not only that it continues that he's incorporated more and more But the success of it uh, improves and continues Playoffs Next question came from my boy Dylan He said hey Graven and team keep it clean Hope all is well Been a while since I said anything but I have some thoughts Since the Dolphins game has definitely been interesting with the play of the team That includes Lamar coaching staff and injuries There's two things I want to mention Everyone can complain about Lamar's playoff late And I love him but it hasn't been pretty No it hasn't been uh, in saying that, does anybody recall or remember when Lamar has called an audible? Does Lamar have control on what he sees or is he being restricted by the play calling? Um, I, I, do, I do think Lamar is restricted. I think he might be limited on the, what audibles he can do. I'm not 100% sure about that. But in, a, in the Dolphins game, he did call for a lot of those screens that they were doing. Um, so that, that, that was him. A lot of it was him. So he can call some audibles, but I'm not, I'm not sure how much freedom is given to Lamar Jackson as a quarterback. Uh, and he said, also in terms of personnel, our defensive line outside of a way seems to be names past their primes put together for not much production. Well, Calais Campbell, he's been doing pretty good. But he, that dude has paid a lot of money. But anyway, uh, on the offensive side, while it's not household names, we actually have some weapons not being used, utilized properly. Andrews, Hollywood, Bateman, DuVernay, Watkins, even Pat Ricard gets more passes thrown at him than most receivers. The fact that we can't put together schemes to utilize the talent we have is concerning. Ooh, that's scary when you put it like that. To be honest, while Lamar has to make plays for us, I do believe we are seeing the end of Greg Roman. And while I don't want people to lose their jobs, the talent we have finally on offense needs to have better production. I agree 1,000% uh, about that part. Uh, one last note, if we make the playoffs, I don't want a home game, have us be a wild card, let us be the walking wounded, give them all the ability to go out there and try to make something happen, because I don't think most teams will want to play us uh, in a one and done situation, because this season Lamar has handled pressure very well in clutch situations and drives the Colts, Vikings, Chiefs, Browns games. I'd like to get your thoughts, all the best. Hey, so this was a really good question, I love the end, because that is the ultimate clutch situation that's the ultimate pressure situation it's playoffs because it, if you lose that's it if you lose you're, you're done no oh we got to come back and adjust next week no that's it and Lamar and this team they've handled that for the most part this year pretty well whether it's been in overtime whether it's been them being down or they need to come back whatever it need whatever the need be they've handled it pretty well so in the playoffs again that's ultimate pressure so Ravens have been battle tested. So hopefully in the playoffs, they hopefully they get another chance to be battle tested in the playoffs too. Next question came from my boy Joy209. He said, Uncle Graven. Oh man, you made me sound a little older than I am, but it's all good. He said, whole family as well, my guy. A couple of random questions. Most of the questions are random. <laughs> he said, What <laughs> what what two safeties do you think would fit our scheme? Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, Minka Fitzpatrick. Oof. Mingo Fitzpatrick would be amazing. Oh, my goodness. Harrison Smith. Oh, he saw he got a nice sack on Roethlisberger tonight. Well, when I'm recording this, when you see this, who knows? But in a Thursday night game, he got a real nice sack on Roethlisberger. Uh, Micah Hyde. Mm, I think he's on the Bills. Uh, I feel like Mingo Fitzpatrick would be a great fit because Mingo Fitzpatrick, he is very physical. Um, and he, he could play corner. And you know Wink. Wink is like, hey, the more you could do. He, oh, what? He said, what? You, you, you could play corner? Well, you used to play corner before, but you're a corner and you a safety. All right, I'm blitzing you, baby. Get, how fast can you run? How fast can you get to that quarterback? So I think Minka, 
Same with Honey Badger too. He he he's also uh, been a decent blitzer as well. So and then it's oh man, why do I have to look at a safety as a blitzer? Well, that's just because of the scheme. So I think those first two for sure. But definitely Minka Fitzpatrick because he has that physicality, and he's just not necessarily a ball hawk, but he he got good ball skills, man. He got real good ball skills, so yeah. And he said, who would you go after for a defensive end if Campbell does decide to retire? Or would you draft a defensive end? Or, and, and if so, who would you draft? I don't watch college at all. I don't start paying attention to these college names until it's right before draft time. Then I start watching them a little bit then. But I don't watch college at all, so I couldn't tell you who right now. Um, but I would. Uh, it would all depend on who was available in free agency. And but I would also draft somebody too to sort of just have somebody waiting in the wings and probably sign somebody in free agency as more of a not even necessarily a safe pick, but sort of a safe uh, pick. And he said one more question. I promise you mentioned that you weren't a fan of fantasy football a couple of weeks ago. And I meant to ask why this is my first year playing and I find myself not liking it makes me a little bit more irritated with the Ravens. Well, mainly Lamar at this point in fantasy. Thanks again. That's why. That's why. Because for me, I get so caught up in the, the real game that I would forget to edit my lineups and I just I wouldn't care about it now. But the, another reason why I don't like it is because it takes away from the game because people will be. Oh, man. Well, why isn't this player scoring more points for me, man? They get so upset with that. They get upset with these players for not doing more when it's hard. It's hard for these players on week in, week out to do so much. And it, I, like I said, I just feel like it, it, it takes so much away from the game anyway his next question he said oh my uh okay my email just decided hey you know what i i want to uh shut down all right here we go now his next question he said my patience is thin now brother hope fam is doing amazing and blessed look what has to be fixed coaching o-line receivers lamar am i the only one that thinks lamar is holding on to the ball way too long i know i should be happy with the eight and four record and number one in our division but like i keep saying that can change any given sunday and at this point it's up in the air i will defend my and our team to the end of time but that two-point conversion wasn't it and i can't defend that i would rather go into overtime and lose than looking stupid going for two and fail sorry for the long rant i'm just heated oh very interesting way you put that um but what what has to be fixed a little bit of everything a little bit of everything that you mentioned you said coaching yes uh o-line yes receivers uh yeah i feel like that the receivers would be more on coaching uh lamar yes so all of that has to be fixed so hopefully your patience can go from being thin to being a lot thicker Next question came from my guy, Mr. Yuri. He said, obviously, the offense is in a slump, and we've all been keen to point that out. But what can we do as an offense to pick it up and have teams back on edge, respecting our run game, and catching teams off guard with play actions and screens? I think that would uh, be getting different guys involved that aren't normally involved. Sammy Watkins giving him more piece of the pie. Rashad Bateman giving him more piece of the pie. And I know Hollywood, he's been a little quiet uh, over the past couple of games. Um, but I say getting other guys involved and, and getting, I say Duvernay a little more in the passing game too. Not just to end the round, not just the jet sweeps and all that, but in the passing game as, as well. So I, I would say that could, to, to just really mix it up. He said, personally, I would like to see some more hurry up offense. Well, that too. Uh, Greg Roman vault plays and some energy. You know, we've been playing lethargic week in and week out, and it seems like we have to be down points or for it to be in the fourth quarter for us to start playing with some urgency. Hopefully, not only the stakes being higher, but these big time games against our division rivals and NFC contenders give us some fire. Yes, we hope so. Next question came from my guy, Philip. He said, hey, man, like the channel. Been watching it for a good minute. I hey, appreciate you, Phil. He said, I honestly believe it's time to let Greg Roman or go or demote him to a run game coordinator. You know, that dude ain't taking no, no demotion. Uh, he said, I honestly been saying this since last year. He's a great run coordinator, but he's not really good with balancing out the run with the pass as an offensive coordinator. He seems like he's stuck on wanting to do things his way instead of adjusting and playing to the strengths of his players. We were all complaining about getting receivers last year, and we have plenty of them now. We sure do. Seven to be exact. My question is, why isn't Greg Roman utilizing them correctly and playing them to their strengths? Head coach Bill Belichick of the Patriots and Josh McDaniels would find a way to utilize all of our receivers we have and make it look like number ones. Offen or make it look like the number one offense. Even the terrible offensive line, we, we, even with the terrible offensive line that we have. Um, that, that, that's all. That ain't nothing but coaching, man. Um, that ain't nothing but coaching. Uh, and yeah, the, you know, Belichick and them, they, yeah, they find a way. Like, they find a way with all these random receivers, and they certainly find a way when they had really good receivers, too. When they had Randy Moss, ooh, wasn't even fair. Wes Welker, they had Dante Stallworth. Like, they, 
Yeah, they find a way. Well, if you stay on a team, then they find a way. Because they had Reggie Wayne, they're like, ooh. They had Ocho Cinco to Chad Johnson, they're like, ooh, no, you're out. So when you stay on the team, they will find a way uh, to get it done. Uh, but yeah, our, our coaching definitely needs to do that. They, they definitely need to do that. Um, and I'm hoping, like, I know it's super late in the season, but that's why I say in the previous question, like, get, get different guys involved. Get different guys involved. It ain't got to be just the same old, same old. That's on coaching. That's on Lamar, too, now. That's on Lamar, too, to get those other guys involved as well. So it's not all on coaching. Lamar got to do his part, too. Next question came from uh, Leeson. He said, I ain't Raven. Hope you and the family are well. I got two questions relating to the recent showings we've seen from this Ravens offense. Well, have they really been showings? He said, Sammy Watkins looked promising the start of the season, but since he returned from injury, it seems like he only produces on the last drive of the game. Uh, do you think it's time we use Bateman in his position and potentially as a deep threat alongside Hollywood, especially after what we've seen in his college highlights? Yes. I do. I think Bateman should get a lot more of Sammy's playing time, especially since he's going to be here in the future. And Sammy Watkins, you don't know if he is or not yet. Uh, but anyway, he said, well, Lamar holding on to the ball for way too long without scrambling out of the pocket when under heavy pressure. Oh, he certainly scrambles out of the pocket with heavy pressure. Well, if he can, if he gets an opportunity to. Uh, but anyway, he said, could there be a possibility that he picks his targets before the snap and waits too long for them specifically to get open leading to those sacks? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There are some times where Lamar will lock on. Sometimes he'll even stare somebody down and still throw it to him. So, again, Lamar is sort of reverting back to, uh, like, to, to not even rookie stuff. Because, like I said, he didn't even do that a lot of times his rookie season. So, he's just, he's starting to form some bad habits that they got to break ASAP. Next question came from my guy, Jonathan. He said, Engra Engraven, hope all everything is well with you and your fam. My question for you is, do you think that the offense and the offensive coordinator are going to split again? Uh, like they were back in 2020. Uh, after going and watching some highlights from the Steelers game, I noticed something. The wide receivers are not playing with effort or tenacity. It's like they're not getting the ball and they don't block or even try to get open for Lamar. And if you go look at the third quarter at the 943 mark, you will see how Marquise Brown literally forgot the play and Andrews didn't even attempt to block for Lamar. Being a former wide receiver, I see that the offense is giving up on Greg Roman and I believe Lamar is frustrated because the play calling is literally an insult to his game. Uh, they're not even ready for the plays because I believe Greg Roman, just like Lamar, is trying to find the big play instead of allowing the game to let them know uh, when to use the big play. Sorry for the long message. Thanks for all you do for the Ravens news. Hashtag go Ravens. Mm, that's an interesting way to put it, and especially from your point of view, since you used to play a uh, wide receiver. Um, effort. Effort is something that you can't teach. Effort is something that um, it's got to be there. And if it's not there, then nothing's going to work. Nothing, especially in a football game for a football team. Oh, boy. If there's no effort, nah, you might as well go ahead and pack it in. For real. So, um, I would have to look at that. But hopefully, uh, if that is the case, then they could turn it around. But that, if, if that is the case, then there would definitely sound like there would be a, a disconnect uh, between uh, coaches and, and players. And it's just something wouldn't be clicking. And uh, it would seem like the players may be just tired of it. Next question came from my guy Rodell. He said, Ravens shuffle. My guy, what's going on? Well, since I sent in the question, it's been months. You know, I'm still locked in though. Got an upcoming problem that I'm trying to prepare myself for. So here we go. Uh oh, are you Ravens Nation and Team Keep It Clean ready for one of the biggest overhauls in the last decade? None of this is fact, but me and what I may think might happen. So let's talk. Defense, P.S., what I feel may happen. Calais Campbell, gone. Brandon Williams, gone. Justin Houston, gone. L.J. Fort, gone. Pernell McPhee, gone. Jimmy Smith, gone. Sean Elliott, 50-50 chance he's gone. Now that we may have digested that, I have a shocking surprise that while I highly doubt it will happen, I could see it. Any guesses? That guy is MP Juice Man. As I said, I doubt it, but I could see a universe where he, where he is released. While I see us drafting another corner high in the draft, I also see us revisiting Xavier Howard in the offseason. Uh, oh, that's, ooh, that, yeah, you, you did say a blockbuster. Anyway, he said, moving on to the offense. Sammy Watkins, gone. Latavius Murray, gone. Miles Boykin, practice squad. James Rocher, practice squad. Uh, if they go on a practice squad, they both getting signed. Uh, but anyway, by, by another team. But anyway, he said, I personally think we re-signed Devontae Freeman, still relatively young and seems to be producing more and more as the season progresses. Also, not sure how good our other two backs look coming off of injury. Well, three. Um, ready for another shocker? While I already highly doubt the previous shocker happens, this one I highly, highly doubt. However, this is the NFL, and we've seen wild things happen. Gus Edwards, while I know what he means when healthy, and if we just extended him, if I had to pick a shocker, it would be him. I can see us trying to trade him to upgrade elsewhere. But again, I doubt it happens. Hmm. That would be something. I know some people have brought that up um, last year. Last year. Uh, whew, that would certainly be something, right? Gus Edwards. Well, 
Yeah, I uh, it'd be kind of hard though. You're coming back from injury. Um, that that would be very that that would make it that much tougher. The fact that he is coming back from injury. Uh, and Ravens like, mm, I, I could see the Devontae Freeman. Though. I could see him coming back, and them just keeping him at least through preseason as just a uh, insurance policy and whatnot. And I mean, we've seen how he's done. He's getting more more comfortable. We've seen what he's done with a bad offensive line. Ravens revamp and retool his offensive line next year. He could do a lot better. He will be another year older now. So we got to keep that in mind, too. Uh, he said, coaching staff, my guy Hobbs is safe. Roman, politely demoted. Oh, so that means that would be a little wink-wink deal. All right, Roman, well, you, you got to go, but I ain't going to fire you. Uh, he said, wink, he stays, strength and conditioning, coordinating staff, pack your bags. Thanks, my guy, and as always, take care, be safe. And for all Ravens, sports, graphics, and edits, follow Revamp Ravens on IG. All right, appreciate you. Next question came from my guy Griff. He said, hey, what's up, man? I was listening to Birdland BS. Hey, shout out to my guys, man. Uh, Fred and Scott, those two, they, they, they've been rocking for a long time, man. Long time, been supporting. Special shout out to them. Uh, he said, I was listening to Birdland BS, and they questioned why doesn't Lamar audible plays at the line. Reminded me that Flacco never audible to made adjustments at the line either in his tenure here. Wanted to hear your thoughts on why we don't see it from our quarterbacks under the hardball era. Is it because they are not comfortable with it, or is it something the coaching staff just doesn't encourage and wants to stick with the script at all times? I feel like we never take advantage of a player or, or playing off coverage by changing the route to a slant or screen or picking on a replacement player that's in for injury or to give a starter a rest. Oh, man, if um, I know a lot of people said that same thing about Flacco. I don't know how true it is, but if it is that he just didn't audible and Lamar doesn't audible like that, um, then that would be the coaching staff. That would show the coaching staff that they just they're not letting them. That would show that they're not letting them and almost sort of holding them back. And you would hope that's not the case. You, But that's that's why I would just love I would love to be. A fly on the wall I would, I would love to be in those meetings And just I would love to know Like alright What does Lamar Have leeway to do What does he have The freedom to do As the quarterback How much responsibility Does he have What can he do What can he change What can he co what, what does he What power does he have I would love to find that out Next question Came from my guy Steph Easy He said Hey what's up Engraven What's up with you And the fam Wishing you nothing but good energy. Uh, am I crazy for thinking this Ravens offense is capable of holding the team down? Hey, they are. They just got to do it. That's it. But anyway, he said, now hear me out. Uh, I am with the fire demote Giro, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry. I just can't make excuses on why our passing game can't get on track over multiple seasons of trying. Pandemic season last year, but I'm pretty sure he tried and say whatever about injuries. But we have first rounders everywhere with unique talents from Lamar, Andrews, Bateman, Hollywood, and even Sammy Woods in his day. My point is that no way that no one can get open, even as crisp as a route runner as Rashad Bateman. And then some games, Bateman does have it going. You see him on the sideline. Bizarre. Uh, for someone that showed he was a reliable first down machine. Yes, that, that is crazy to all of us. Um, then with Hollywood, Giro has gone back to not activating playoff primetime Hollywood. It's quite annoying, by the way. Uh, we've seen him before that bye week when he was being an actual threat on every play. Then Lamar versus Zero Blitz situation. I think that is much on scheme as much as on Lamar and screen passes are not it. But Lamar's turnovers are inexcusable. Can't have that. That's true. Uh, the craziest thing to me is that the up-tempo offense seems to uh, seems best to everyone except Giro. And I don't know if it was a shot or not, but Harbaugh said after the Steelers game that that's too many sacks on Lamar, whether he's holding on uh, to the ball too long or not, and we have to do a better job of that. That could have only been pointed to Giro and his inability to create an effective short passing game. I don't know. What do you think, Engraven? This offense was humming before the bye. I don't know about that. If they were humming, there was a slow hum. Like, um, it wasn't no, <laughs> nope, it was, uh, it was slow. Uh, anyway, uh, they were humming before the bye. Uh, then, despite turnovers and offensive line play, can we get back to that? Uh, well, can we actually be better? Because what they were doing before the bye is, it wouldn't, won't be good enough. It won't. But yeah, it's, it's all about adjusting. Find, finding ways to get your guys involved in, like you said, the short passing game is essential. It's essential because you have a bad offensive line. They can't block forever. Even a good offensive line can't block forever. 
So that short passing game got to be incorporated and incorporated fast. Next question came from my guy Earl. Not Earl Thomas, though. His, his name is Earl Tito. But, oh, maybe this is a burner email. Anyway, he said, hey, Raven, hope you and the fam are good and keep the content coming. Okay, here we go. The cries from Ravens fans have been to replace Greg Roman, which I can agree with, but for different reasons. I don't think it's okay calling at all or, or I don't think it's okay calling at all or need to evolve. Each time Greg Roman has started as an offensive coordinator for a team, the first two, maybe three years have been fantastic than defense defenses catch up, especially in your division, uh, since they see you twice and they can draft defensive players specifically for your offense. That's what I believe is going on. That and Lamar misreading defensive coverages and not taking what they're giving him. Now, my question, hypothetically speaking, at the end of the season, the Ravens move on from Greg. Who outside of the organization do you think would be a good offensive coordinator and what system tree do you think would fit? For example, a Kyle Shanahan type of offense? Ooh, this is a great question. And because he said outside of the organization. Oh, man. Um... Hmm. Kyle Shanahan type of offense. That that is an offense that utilizes their playmakers. Uh, obviously, with George Kittle, um, he just we we, we know um, they actually still use a fullback. So fullbacks they they will keep it moving. Um, and they're different wide receivers again. Debo Samuel. We see him, and and then we all think, oh, Devin Duvernay, he could do that same stuff if they just did it the right way. Um. So yeah, I, yeah, Kyle Shanahan. Who else? Um. Hmm. Maybe if Cardinals, if they, I know they can't get their offensive coordinator because nobody will make no lateral move. But if they could get like a Cardinals, maybe like a one of the coaches from there, or whether it be a QB coach or wide receiver coach, somebody from their uh their offense. Um, because while they have several receivers, but they, they get those guys involved. They obviously DeAndre Hopkins, but they got A.J. Green. He ain't done too much this year, but he's been getting involved a little bit here and there. But Rondell Moore, Rondell Moore, little guy, but speed like crazy. They got him involved. Kurt, like they, they get their guys involved, and that's a beautiful thing. Then Kyler Murray, of course, he can still take off too. So that, that's been something that's been nice to see. So that, that's where I will go to. Next question came from my boy, Be More 31 Appreciate you being the patron. A brand new patron, by the way. He said, hey, what's up, Engraven? Thank you for all the videos you put out day in and day out. I really appreciate everything you do. I hey, appreciate you, man. He said, I just joined the Patreon club. Okay, I seen the video you put out on the last question from subscribers. Got me thinking. Just tell me if I'm wrong. Could the presence of a veteran, a veteran leadership be missing in Lamar's corner? We let RG3 and Mark Ingram go. They had wonderful insights on Lamar's decision-making and issues. This year, not so much. Ooh, that is such a good question. Because we... Like, on offense, we got Sammy Watkins, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, wow. I, oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, he said, I bring this up because he's not in tune with the QB coach and Greg Roman. I agree a new line of coaches are needed, but not the receiver coach or Wink and Harbaugh. But if something doesn't change, we might not only lose a playoff game, but we could lose something much, something much more valuable, Lamar Jackson. Something else I was thinking about. Lamar looks like he is dealing with a lot of pressure from all angles, for sure. From receivers, uh, from receivers, fans, offensive line not blocking, coaches, etc. My point is depression is real, and I feel like Lamar is going through it from losing all the stars to this team, which it can hurt your performance. And personally, look at Ridley and A.J. Brown in that situation. As fans, we should support Lamar and not keep on bashing him for his play. What do you think? Sorry for the long message. Promise shorter one next time. No, it's all good. One more. Juwan James is practicing with the team. That's some good news. I am out. Appreciate you. Um, no, with, with Lamar, I mean, as fans, that's, that's what we do. We get on here and we talk. We talk about Lamar Jackson. We talk about everybody, though. But and not even bashing him, though. We just, it's, it's, it's healthy, constructive criticism. And, and it's doing it respectfully. Like, we get on in here. Oh, Lamar sucks. He's terrible. What a terrible player. He shouldn't be in the NFL. He's garbage. Da, da, da. No. Uh -uh. Ain't nobody doing that. Shouldn't be doing that about anybody. Because these are NFL players. And they, they, if they're having a bad game, they're they struggling a bit. It's been a little bit rough for them for a bit. But these guys, they they the top 1% in the world. Uh, but anyway, um, with Lamar, I mean, I hope that's not the case. You never know what somebody's going through. You, 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 you never know. You never know what's going on in somebody's personal life. So we don't know. Uh, but he does, definitely does have a lot of pressure, like you mentioned. A whole lot of pressure comes from a whole lot of different places. And that could be on, both on and off the field, like you mentioned. So um, hopefully the on-field pressure 
is able to be dealt with uh, by the, the the offensive line, the coaching staff, and everybody else. Uh, and off-field pressure, if anything, off-field is pressuring him too. Uh, then that can be dealt with as well because Lamar Jackson, is a, he's a household name, and it's always somebody talking about him. Always, always. Like, that's, that's a lot to deal with, man. It's literally all, and it's always, it's, it's always, you got a lot of good, but you got a lot of bad too. Always, like 24-7. You're on your social media, you, 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 you turn on ESPN, the NFL Network, you, you just hear so much all the time, and that can bother you. So hopefully um, he, he doesn't let that affect him. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscriber, came from my guy Raven Pride, and shout out to you for being a patron. He said, hey, Raven, what's going on, my brother? Sorry I missed the last stream. I was doing a special trip to Canada. As you know, uh, I'm a truck driver, so I couldn't turn down that moolah. I feel you, man. I just got one question, and please give myself and others your best take on this because I know you will keep it clean and keep it real. Now, if this is what our offensive coordinator is saying, that he has a lot, in a lot stored in his vault, then, the brother, he must have lost the combination because this team, which I love through the good and the bad times, is looking like we are into a new playbook, and everyone seems to be confused. With all of the injuries that we have, our OC needs to be putting the best players on the field and especially not sitting in number one draft pick. And Lamar, the truth, looks like he doesn't have a clue what's going on at times. Because if you say you practice against the zero blitz, uh, then we, the Ravens, should be the blitz busters. Sorry, Engraven, for the long message, but this isn't the Ravens team that we know that shows the guts and glory. May God continue to bless you and your family. And let's give a shout out to your boy, Carter. Appreciate that. Now, um... That's funny. Somebody mentioned uh, they, when uh, Lamar said, oh, yeah, we, we, we practice against the, the Blitz every day. Uh, in that video, they were like, well, um, y'all got to remember that Wink, Wink and them, their Blitzes, they don't get there. <laughs> they don't get to the quarterback. So maybe that's why Lamar and them are struggling because these other teams' Blitzes actually get to Lamar and they get to the quarterbacks. Um, but, yeah, that, that vault, it, it got to get opened up. You can't save nothing for the playoffs. You can't be like, oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll save this for... No, open that thing up, man. Open that thing up and, and, and let's get this thing cracking, man, because the offense has been a struggle. Like, I mean, like you've heard all video. Everybody's on the same page. We know the offense. Offense is... All, this team, they will live by and die by this offense for the rest of the season. They will live by, die by. That's it. That's it. This off this team goes as far as the offense goes, and the offense doesn't go anywhere. Then the team won't either. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.